In this course, we'll provide an overview of operational amplifiers and a discussion of important criteria for selecting an op amp for an application. In general, an operational amplifier is a high gain voltage amplifier with a positive input, a negative input, voltage supply pins, and an output. It can be configured for many different operations, thus the name operational amplifier or op amp. In the linear operating region, the output voltage is equal to the input difference voltage times the gain. Op amps are ubiquitous. They can be found in a large variety of devices from consumer to industrial and instrumentation applications. An op amp can be used in many different ways and is a basic building block for analog circuits. The function of the circuit is determined by the op amp configuration and the external components selected. Fundamentally, an ideal op amp has infinite voltage gain, infinite input impedance, zero output impedance, infinite bandwidth, and zero input offset voltage. Two typical op amp configurations are negative feedback and positive feedback. In negative feedback configurations, the output voltage is fed back to the inverting input, which, along with the feedback network components, determines the magnitude of the output voltage gain. In positive feedback configurations, the output voltage is fed back to the non-inverting input to facilitate regenerative gain and oscillation. There are several common op-amp circuit configurations, most of which employ negative feedback. With negative feedback, the output voltage drives only as high or as low as needed to maintain a zero difference between its two inputs. This feedback configuration greatly reduces the gain of the circuit. The circuit's overall gain and response are determined mostly by the feedback network rather than by the op-amp characteristics. However, the circuit operation becomes stable, self-correcting, and predictable. These examples emphasize the fact that a single amplifier can be configured for many different operations. When selecting an op-amp for an application, the most important criteria to consider are What is the power supply operating voltage range? What maximum input and output signal swing is required? How much accuracy does the application require? What kind of load will the circuit drive? How fast does the input signal vary and how much power consumption is allowed? Some additional specifications must also be considered for certain applications. For time domain pulse oriented applications, key specifications include the slew rate, settling time, and DC precision. Some examples are data acquisition and waveform generation in instrumentation. For frequency domain modulated carrier applications, it's important to consider harmonic distortion and noise floor. Some examples are wireless communications and base station applications. And for low frequency precision applications, key specifications include DC precision, offset, and drift. Some examples are temperature sensors and programmable logic controllers. Let's review some of the important op-amp specifications. Slew rate is the rate of change in the output voltage for a step change in the input. It's usually specified in volts per microsecond. Slewing is mainly caused by internal frequency compensation capacitances. Mathematically, slew rate is the maximum magnitude of the change in output voltage with respect to time. For a sine wave with no slew rate limitation, the slew rate can be said to be at least equal to 2 pi times the maximum frequency times the peak amplitude of the waveform. For time domain pulse oriented applications, slew rate is a critical specification because it determines the maximum amplitude at the highest frequency the system can deliver. When an op amp has good slew rate, the output signal will be less distorted. Another key specification to consider for time domain pulse oriented applications is settling time. Settling time is the time required for the output voltage to settle within a specified error band of its final value. The error band is typically specified to be within 
0.1% of the final value. Intuitively, one can see that the settling time will determine the maximum data transfer rate when driving an analog to digital converter. No matter how fast the ADC, if the input data is not valid or stabilized, then the data is not usable. Total harmonic distortion, or THD, is defined as the ratio of the sum of the powers of all higher harmonic frequencies to the power of the fundamental frequency. The second and third harmonic distortions are the ratio of the second and third harmonic frequencies, respectively, to the fundamental frequency. The noise floor is the level of noise that determines the smallest signal for which the circuit is useful. This is usually measured when all input sources are turned off and the output is properly terminated. Spurious free dynamic range, or SFDR, is the difference between the fundamental and the next largest frequency component. For frequency domain applications, THD, noise floor, and SFDR are all important specifications to consider because they affect dynamic range and the integrity of the signal. The input and output signal swing are also referred to as headroom. When the headroom is rail to rail, the op amp can accept the input or drive the output to the positive and negative supply voltage levels. There are three types. Rail to rail for inputs only, rail to rail for outputs only, and rail to rail for both. Rail to rail outputs can drive ADCs to the maximum dynamic range. Rail-to-rail -rail inputs can sense the input at the lowest level, and rail-to-rail -rail for both input and output help maintain the dynamic range of the input signal. Note that rail-to-rail -rail outputs can get to within a few tens or hundreds of millivolts of VDD and VSS, depending on the load. However, they cannot be the same as or exceed the supply voltage. There are a few specifications that are very important for precision applications. Offset voltage is the differential DC voltage which, when applied between the op-amp inputs, will make the output zero. A change in offset voltage due to a change in temperature is known as voltage offset drift. Bias current is the current flowing into or out of the op-amp input terminals. Common mode rejection ratio, or CMRR, is the ratio of the differential gain to the common mode gain. And power supply rejection ratio, or PSRR, is the change in output voltage caused by a change in the power supply. This is a typical signal chain. Op amps are used before an ADC for input interface and signal conditioning. Usually, the op amps used for input interface require low noise, low offset and drift, high input impedance, and differential input type. They are also used as signal conditioning to match the ADC input requirements and need to be able to handle capacitive loads and have low distortion. For sensor conditioning, the op amps need to be low noise, low offset and drift, have high input impedance, and high open loop gain. Also, in the back end of the signal chain, op amps are usually placed after a DAC to drive the output load. And for that, large swings, fast slew rate and settling, and high output current are normally the key requirements. In this course, we have given an overview of an op amp, key specifications and top criteria in selecting one depending on different applications. For more information, please go to our website at www.maximintegrated.com under Products, Analog, and Amplifiers. We hope you enjoy this video and see you again next time in another educational video of Maxim Integrated.